Restaurant Unstoppable. What the most successful restaurateurs know that you don't. Is there anything we haven't discussed up to this point regarding your journey, lessons learned, th things that you do exceptionally well that you think contribute to your success that's worth bringing to the surface before we kind of talk about the future, how you you know plan to evolve for the future, if anything, um, now's the time to get it out. Mm -hmm. I just say I document a lot, you know, like in anything that I've done, like I was always kind of taught to do that, you know, so it's like I try to pay attention to, you know, every wine that I tasted. So like right now in this moment, I can't really meet with a rep to taste any wine. So I'm trying to go back on things that I've tasted over the last 11 years and be like, OK, yeah. I remember this wine. Yeah. Like it's so good, you know, so I think documenting has been huge and like just creating the process of like making sure that we continue to, to communicate and, you know, know who's when who and where like somebody's in the dining room and what regulars we have and what are the things that you, that you document that you think most other restaurateurs don't that they should document oh i'm not even sure i feel like i document i mean we manager log every single night but i think every restaurant does that now to be honest like i try to document our sit downs with my staff um years and years ago we used to call it boxing like sitting down and like going back and forth with an employee who could either provide with pop like you know positive enforcement on something like something they felt was valuable to the restaurant and they could get it out or in a way that they were like e being destructive or toxic in the dining room that we could have this one-on-one -on -one conversation to identify an issue as opposed to like being very black and white that was like you know written warning written warning verbal warning fire right yeah. because progressive discipline is so important yeah, yeah now it's like you know can we talk about something i'm noticing in you and this weird shift like is there something going on okay. and like i'm documenting it but it's not like a form Way this, is, of this is huge. Progressive discipline. Get mm -hmm. into that. What is it? So progressive discipline is, you know, the way we're taught is in a way to basically try to be as black and white with an employee as you possibly can. And it's really hard in a restaurant business because there's so much gray so many times. Right. And it's also very much how and when the timing of this, you know, action happens. So it could be like a very vulnerable state where somebody like misbehaves or set does something ridiculous on uh, on the middle of a crazy shift. It could be a call out on a very busy night. If the call out happened on a not so busy night, would we have the same reaction? Yeah. So um, in that way, it's very important to have this progressive discipline form in, in a way that's just like, okay, that's a written warning. This is a written warning. And, you know, the next one could lead you to termination, right? Yeah. Why is it so important to document these things? Well, it's um, important, I think, for t both ways. One is to cover yourself personally in management, you know, um, unemployment, you know, filing and all that stuff. All the unemployment insurances start to rise on you if you have people that are always claiming. Um, uh, it keeps our management in line, too, personally, the way I see it from from somebody who's managing managers now it gives me a way to understand where they're at with their staff um you know if i keep reading uh, a couple of comments in a manager long consistently about a particular employee and they're misbehaving or their you know mistakes or whatever you know my follow-up to that conversation is like should you have a sit yeah. down out of the time in which they're doing the action in a way to correct the problem, you know, yeah. um, and then putting them on notice about it. You yeah, know? it forces you to communicate. It forces you when you when you make it a part of your operation to, to say when if this, then that if there is an issue, then there is a follow up meeting Then right. it forces you to get these things out. Cause sometimes you might notice it. Uh, if you don't have these systems put in place, then it will get away from you. Maybe you never communicate that this person is doing it wrong. Or maybe they say that you never said anything. Right. Which now you can protect yourself from wrongful termination or anything like that. So well, you, there's a track record saying we, we communicated, there wasn't progress made. Right. And like you said, it's important for them to know where they are because people want to know if they're doing right or wrong. They want to know how they're doing. Right. So you need to set up that time to let them know that they are doing it right or wrong. So huge. Well, and, you know, during the time prior to COVID and like, you know, when there was the saturated market, you know, we were very much looking as management at ourselves and critiquing our management style, right? Like kitchens can't behave the way they did in the past. That, you know, demeanor has to change. The culture has to change in so many ways, right? Like, yeah. you know, but specific to management, culture needs to change. And, um, you know, the expectation that we have for our employees could be different than they thought that they that they were going to be expected to, to perform to. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if there's so many inconsistencies and then worries because we were shorthanded. So we were shorthanded going into a shift and then you kind of just left with this place of like, well, if I give this person a written warning, will they walk on me because there's no loyalty and in return that 
sets me back even more, right? Yep. So it became this kind of fearful transaction between a management, uh, somebody in management to an employee because you were like, does this make the situation better or worse? And where does it put me? Mm -hmm. Right. And it becomes very like, you know, selfish in a certain way yeah. where you're like, I, I can't, I can't manage that person, yeah. but it does get to a place most often than not that it, you know, it, it, it butts you in the butt because yeah. then you're like, <laughs> Oh man, I should have terminated that person when they no called, no showed, you know, two weeks ago, but I wasn't busy. Now right. they call out because they think they can on a busy weekend night and my whole team's affected and I'm the one that looks bad because I gave them the benefit of the doubt, right? Yeah. Nancy, I've been loving this conversation. You've been dropping gold on us. You really have. <laughs>